Hey, welcome back to Content is Profit. This is Luis, and I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you because your support has been incredible. We're actually climbing up the ra the ranks and the charts in the marketing category in the U.S., in Canada, United Kingdom, Australia. Here we go. So thank you so much for downloading and listening to the episodes. Thank you so much for the feedback. Bring it back. Reach out to us on social media. Let us know we've connected with incredible people here in Florida and all all around the world and let us know what you want to listen to. So over the last couple of weeks, we've been prepping with people that we work with. We've been planning a massive book launch who's going to be announced very, very soon. And uh, we've been working with teams all around the world. So we've been a little bit, a little bit busy, but we have some good content coming up in the next few days. We have amazing conversations that we have booked in our calendar to keep this moving forward. But today, Obviously, because we've been coming from Fun Hiking Live and all these events, we were invited to talk to their major affiliates. And we had a conversation with Turner, who was managing this thing for ClickFunnels. And it's like, guys, I love what you are doing with your podcast. I love what you guys are doing with the community. Come and explain to us how was this born? What's the framework behind it? How can you be so consistent? How can you be pushing content every single week with that energy, with that love? Um, and well, first of all, it's because we love it. We love it. But here is actually we're going to rerun the presentation. So this was, I think, episode 174, but it's so good. And it's one of our keynotes that we share in different events. So we share exactly what we do, how we do it and how everything was born. So hopefully you can take one, two, three, four, five pieces of information so you can apply into your business. Start thinking about those frameworks. Start thinking, how can you be consistent? Because consistency is everything. And that's how you start connecting your content to profit. With that said, enjoy. We've got hey, this is Luis. And this is Luis. <laughs> You're listening before. to the content is profit podcast. And we spent the last four years learning the strategies and techniques from some of the top marketers in the world on how to create content that turns into profit. If you'd like to learn how to turn that content into profit, just go to contentisprofit.com. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go check it out right now, guys. And today we have actually a very special episode. Yes. Take it away. Take it away, me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you, brother. Thank What's you. What's it about? Uh, so actually, we were invited by the incredible people and partners from ClickFunnels to share some of our frameworks and knowledge with their top affiliates. And we just had the incredible opportunity to jump in there and talk about the publishing pyramid. Hashtag juicy, juicy. Hashtag juicy, Gucci. Gu Gucci, Gucci. <laughs> juicy, Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag juicy, juicy. Hashtag ton of golden boulders. And uh, we had a blast. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, guys. So go enjoy the episode and we will talk to you at the end of the presentation. Oh, the presentation. The presenta What's happening, Fonzie? I don't know what is happening, All but right. I think it's the excitement. Yeah. Let's go. Let's do this. Take it away. See you guys. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the, the, the publishing pyramid, right? And, and, you know, as a business, what we do is we actually have an agency that multi-purpose content uh, on the back end, right? There's a little bit more to that, but that's a, that's a simple definition. And uh, this framework, the publishing pyramid, is what took us from literally no online presence whatsoever and freelancing to like a six-figure agency in less than six months. You know, after everybody for years have been telling us, you guys have to publish uh, a ton. So uh, what I'll explain today is a little bit of our journey on how we discover and how we actually went out and, and started publishing, right? So not only that on the agency, but is we published more than 170 episodes by now. Uh, entrepreneurs like Steve Larson, Alex Sharp, and Bart Miller, Todd Brown, the one and only, you know, uh, Turner <laughs> Leslie here. And um, <laughs> Of course, you know, like I said, everybody here is more than invited to to come. Uh, we were able to speak at a live event. One of them, Marley Jack's VIP day. We were able to to come in and share some of these frameworks. Podfest, Vis, VidFest, we got invited to talk to them. We have a couple live events in Texas later this year. So publishing is what allows us to do some of that. Uh, we currently are consistently publishing more than 400 pieces of content every single month consistently without any friction, which is super incredible. So, you know, the system that we were able to build was born out of the show. I'll show that a little bit of that. And obviously building relationships with our Dream 100 is literally priceless, right? We were able to build a process and a team after being freelancers for about four years and we were like getting oh, so done, so done. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've honestly haven't even found that downside to 
to publishing at first, you know, and I think it would, hand in hand with Ryan here, I was actually reading one of your Facebook posts that you did about fear, right? And we were so scared to just get in front of the camera and share a message, right? I mean, we're from South America, Venezuela. Uh, we have a little bit of an accent or English is, like my brother says, it's, it's very good looking. It's not very good looking. <laughs> That's not what very I said. good looking. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, we will get self-conscious. And honestly, just getting in front of the camera and sharing our message and de dealing with those fears, we've gained so much. So every time we say, you know, publishing, it, it's an understatement to say it has just brought us clarity and business. It, we honestly haven't found a downside to it. But... So you guys get to know a little bit more of how the publishing pyramid started, how the process for us to multi-purpose all this content started, right? All our life, we wanted to be soccer players. That's what was in our mind. We just play soccer 24-7. We came to the States to play soccer on a college scholarship. And when that was over, you know, pretty much our dreams crashed. We were like, okay, what are we going to do next? <laughs> uh, and, you know, I think a lot of athletes go on the way of, I don't want to work for anybody. I want to try to do my own thing. And they, they, they go into the entrepreneurial journey. So we decided to start a sticker company with one of our roommates. We did not know anything about business. Uh, our roommate literally came one day and he's like, guys, let's start a sticker company. We're like, yes. Let's do it. How do and we actually do the stickers? Yeah, how do we do the stickers? How do we design? He's like, it doesn't matter. They got great margins. We're like, oh, that's awesome. What are margins? Right? Like, <laughs> we knew nothing about business. And we started doing the stickers. Right after that, a few months after, we started doing screen printing. Fun fact, this t-shirt right here, we, it was the last t-shirts we actually screen printed before saying goodbye to that business because it was absolutely horrible here in Florida. Screen printing <laughs> in a garage, uh, 90 degree Fahrenheit, 90% uh, humidity. Trust me. No it, bueno. Yeah, no it, bueno. <laughs> that, that's where we learned you need to enjoy the process, right? And again, publishing has, has brought a lot of joy uh, to our lives. So when we started growing these businesses, we started getting educated into the ClickFunnels market. Actually, uh, it was the dot-com secrets, kind of like the book that opened the gateway to the entrepreneurial journey. And, you know, Russell makes it pretty easy for you to believe, <laughs> right? And trust yourself that you can do it. You read that book and you're like, I can build anything. I can build any business that I want to with these tools that he's sharing with you. So that was us. I was literally sitting in a Panda Express <laughs> reading this book before going and coach some soccer kids. And I'll call my brother like, dude, you need to read this book. This book is amazing. This book is amazing. So after that, we started a social media marketing agency and we just did a bunch of things, email marketing, uh, video content creation, product launch, just whatever we could get our hands to, right? I mean, this resonated with what you shared, Ryan. Uh, we were just trading our time for money. We thought we had a business, but we were just playing freelancers at the moment. We had no systems, no processes, no nothing. And, you know, we were just like barely scraping by, which was not fun. And it got to a day that we were actually pitching about content to one of the people that we started working with eventually. And they were like, oh, this is all really cool. We love what you guys are doing, but where is your content? Like, we don't see what you guys are, you know, preaching about. We don't see you guys doing it. And we were like, pr, pr. We, should, we should go do that presentation today. And say, yeah. As I was today. Just go. yeah, it was like <laughs> three punches on the face, one on the gut, and it, it was bad, right? And we're like, okay, well, mm. we need to start publishing. And we tried it before because everybody was like, publish, 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 right? Like every, everywhere online we would go, you hear, you know, incredible people. Like, for example, we have Ping Yun here and he's like massive publisher, right? He shares so much content. And we're like, oh, let's try to do it like him. Then you see Gary Vaynerchuk, oh, let's try to do it like him, right? Then Steve Larson is like, oh, they're so loud. We want to be loud as well, right? And that led to us trying to implement at, at a capacity that we couldn't execute on. Right. And immediately we would try it for maybe like a week. And it's like, OK, no, it's too much. We cannot do it. Right. And it just kept going that way until one day we were in the middle of the 75 hard. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that challenge. Yeah. Uh, and, and we were like, we we're actually going pretty hard at it. And we're like, we look at each other like, huh, we've actually stayed pretty consistent with this. What if we apply the same principles from this challenge to publishing? Mm -hmm. Right. And we came up with our own publishing challenge. We called it the 45 Live. The idea was go live one day, every single day for 45 days straight um, on Facebook, right? And 
it was absolutely amazing. We made it to day 17, right? <laughs> But well, yeah, both the of first us. time, yeah, we made it to day 17. That's it. Pretty But much. the reason being is because there were people listening, right? As we started sharing our message, people that didn't interact, they didn't engage with our content, they were actually listening. And one day, this guy reached out to my brother and he's like, hey, dude, I've seen your videos on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I'm actually doing a content dinner and inviting people. And I'm actually looking for someone just like you on your business for a project that I'm about to pitch to this big real estate company. Would you like to join dinner? And my brother was like, absolutely, of course, I right? Yeah, I mean, free food always. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and he, why not? <laughs> he went and that, that right there, that conversation became the biggest uh, deal that we had at the moment, right? It was a six-figure deal. We were like, what is this? This is absolute madness. Publishing works, right? And then we started fulfilling and we started telling ourselves, you know what? We are too busy to keep publishing. Let's just fulfill until we went to Funnel Hacking Live and we were at a table with incredible entrepreneurs like Josh Forty, right? And we started sharing this story and they were like, wow, that's amazing. So you guys did it again, right? And, and we're, we're like, like eh, uh, it's been three months. Yeah. And, uh, no. So, <laughs> no. And that was like, why don't we, do, why do we tend to change things? Let's do more of what works, right? And we started season two of 45 Live. And the cool thing is, I lasted till day 15 because we got more business. My brother did manage to finish, and I, I feel like I'm taking over, so I'm actually going to let him talk a little bit. Um, I, I mean, you were doing just fine, Fonzie. You, he was like, I'm nervous, dude. And I'm like, no, it's just fine. Uh, but, yeah, he actually, you know, day 17, we got another client, right, yep. similar level, and it's like, okay, it works. And I was like, okay, I'm committed to those 45 days. And actually, if you go back to our feed, you will see those videos at 11.30 at night. It was like commitment, right? Like the, the only thing that we're committed to in here is consistency, right? Because without consistency – there's nothing to measure after, right? Like the consistency is the mother of all KPIs. And we're like, okay, this is it, right? And that establishes different conversations. We met incredible people that now are part of our business in different levels, right? As a client, as a partner, as a strategic partner. And, and we're like, okay, so this actually works. Like consistency works, right? Minimal viable content. That's how we call it, right? The 45 mm -hmm. Live, which for us meant going live now for a lot of people that might look different right it might look like a daily blog it might look like posting on instagram stories it doesn't matter what your minimal viable content but what is the thing that you can execute consistently right so one of these days like after that right um it, it got to a point where COVID hit where we live in florida and uh, we were helping a ton of brick and mortars right we will go in and we'll actually record content in their location right with these cameras all this equipment and 80 of the clients that we had completely closed doors and they call within a week and they're like guys we cannot I'll pay you like next month we don't even know how we're gonna survive and crisis mode started big <laughs> i went to freak out mode Fonzie was like slapping me in the face like walk outside go out like take a walk i cannot talk to you right now when we came back you know we were like okay you know we need to uh figure out how you know how we're actually gonna continue to publish but we gotta use this leverage to make sure that we can actually sell stuff Uh, or the service that we're comfortable with so, so we're able to survive. We, we had about a 60-day runway, right? So uh, talk about pressure. And and that's why Content is Profit was born, right? And we decided to create it frictionless because actually a year before that, it was like, okay, uh, should we start a podcast? And we're like, heck yeah. So we purchased the equipment. If you see around here, there's a roadcaster. You know, we got the webcams, all the stuff. And uh, the production value that we thought we needed was a lot of friction. So we never mm. published Every, any any of the episodes so we yep. decided to go live and that's why the show is live right so after that we start building relationships one of those relationships was Catherine jones right and um she invited us over to her nine at nine show and we're sharing this and through publishing we're getting these incredible epiphanies incredible like frameworks that just are coming out because we're putting in the reps every single day on sharing what we're learning sharing what we're doing documenting the journey right and uh this concept came up the publishing pyramid which now became the, like probably our main framework that we even base off of the the sales calls that we're having with our clients the the evolution and the and the the journey that they're taking over right so 
we're gonna we're gonna start explaining a little bit of that before Fonzie goes into the first stage. We gotta understand it from the top bottom, right? And then we gotta execute from the bottom up. And by the way, we do have a little bit of a workbook, so if you guys have access to it, please feel free to send us a message, and we'll we'll, we'll send it guys. We'll, we'll send it to you. So how do we understand from the top bottom? The first level at the very top, what we see is the resources, right? People scaling. So we see people like Russell, for example, like Gary Vee. They have massive machines and teams behind this content. Most people are going to see them. They're like, I want to do that. Like, like what it happened to us, right? We will try it. The you know the Peng Jun's model. And we we actually were at, uh, it's Monday baby with Steve and mm -hmm. and we came to Peng and at the time the show was not a thing right and we're like this is the thing that we're following and modeling it but guess yeah. what the capacity the team is not there the process is not there and then we fall off right so we gotta understand what are our resources do we actually have a team like how much money do we have allocated for this how much time do we have right right under that is like what is the capacity that we actually have to create to promote right and we gotta be horribly honest with uh, on like, what is this, right? To us, when we tackle 45 Live, it was 30 minutes a day, commitment, just us, no editing, right? Like it, that, that's what it was, right? Now with the team, right, we have a, a three time a week show, each, you know, show lasts about an hour, hour and a half and so on, there's a process after that. Right? So what is our capacity today to be able to be consistent, which is the third step that we need to understand. Yeah. How can we be consistent? What is my consistency cadence? Am I actually gonna publish once a week? What does that look like? Am I gonna publish three times a week? Am I publish every single day? What does that look like? Something that we can sustain over time without burning out. And the very bottom, the very base is like, every, none of that works if we don't have the messaging right. Like who are we talking to? What is the audience that we're, that we're helping? Like what are the problems that we're solving, right? If that's not clear, then everything else is gonna start crumbling, right? So we gotta start at the very base, which, fancy. Ball, yeah. ball back at you. Back to, to back messaging, to right? And like my brother said, that is the very first step when we started executing. And we kind of discovered at first that we couldn't find that message alone, right? We needed to have conversations with the people that we were trying to help to really understand what are their pains, right? Where are they trying to go? And then how we can help them and how we can show that in our messaging, right? Very, very important. But a lot of times when we started, right, we wor we worried about the production at first. It was like, oh, we wanted to make it look incredible, just put so much friction. So what we started telling ourselves just to execute was quality of the message over quality of the production every single time. Quality of the message over quality of production. And that was mainly me because I was the, the one that did a lot of the editing before we had a team and I'll, I was very, I mean, I'm still sometimes have, you know, like that feeling of like perfectionist sometimes. Like, Got to slap it real quick, <laughs> get it out of me. But it, it's tough, man. But we started just saying to ourselves, that was our mantra. Uh, quality of the message over quality of the production. So for that, we decided to just focus on simple, right? One problem, one solution. What is that message that we're just going to be consistent with? Then people won't remember always what you say, but they will remember how you made them feel. Right, so okay, what are those stories that we're sharing? Are we bringing emotions, right? Because emotions then create memories, and then, right? If people recall those emotions, they're gonna start thinking about, huh, this person made me feel this way, right? And they're gonna start remembering you. Then we discover eventually that there were the, what we call now the three P's of differentiation, right? Product, process, and personality. And we're like, okay, what can we tackle with our message, right? I mean, I, I'm going to be honest. We do leverage the fact that we are brothers, right? Real brothers with the same name. You guys have heard that they call me Fonzie, but it's because my, my real name is Luis as well. He's Luis Daniel. I am Luis Alfonso. So people get all confused and we're like, okay, you can just call me Fonzie. But then people are always saying like, oh yeah, the brothers with the same name, right? And we started creating like a brand and... That also, we used to wear the same shirts every single time for the first like 150 episodes with the backwards hats. All right, it's like these guys. Um, copy paste, copy, copy paste. paste, right? But that was, that became part of our brand, of our messaging, right? And then obviously we'd say be passionate and vulnerable about what you're sharing. Uh, share your stories, and I repeat this one again: there's no memory without emotions, right? 
Right. So yeah, um, to kind of complement a little bit of that, like th whatever medium that we're doing, either if it's Instagram posts, lives, right, a show, that message has to stay consistent, right? There's different mediums and it's going to look and feel different as far as like the production value of it. Right? It's mm -hmm. going to evolve. As we get more resources, we can invest in the machine and that production value ends. But the message at its core stays very solid, right? So obviously the next stage is like that is, is consistency, right? So with consistency, it comes opportunity. The very cool example was the 45 light one, right? And it's, um, it was day 14. And I remember I was coming that at that time I actually had a job, right? Um, and, and I was coming from my job around 10 PM. My son was four months old and I was like, man, I gotta do this 45 light thing. Like we committed publicly. I gotta do it. Right. So I go home and that was about the time that I needed to give him a bottle. Right. So I, I grab the baby, I sit down in the in the couch, give him the bottle, put him back to bed. It's 11 at night, 11.30, I think it was, right? And I'm like, dang it, I got 30 minutes. I like, should I do it? Ah, okay, I'm actually gonna do it, right? And it was the first video that I actually, you know, I recorded outside of our studio. It was in my house, in, my, in the couch where I feed the baby, right? So I'm like, okay, guys, the video was literally like, I'm sharing a story of something that happened at work with the publishing, the, the stuff that we're doing for them, right? And how I was very unhappy happy and that was the video at 11 30 at night that these guys saw that the guys reached out to me at midnight that turned into a six-figure contract for us right so it's like oh man what would have happened if i would have said done right so consistency with consistency comes opportunity so after that we duplicated that model again season two and it worked and then we duplicated it again when we launched the show in about three months we recover all the sales that we lost because we were consistent on the production and the promotion and the connection aspect of it so i just want to like drill that because consistency tends to be the most challenging thing to do it, right? Because we don't have the resources or the capacity to implement something that we might've thought. Sometimes we just grab this massive yeah. bite and it's really challenging to fulfill, right? So uh, obviously quality of the message over quality of, of, the, of the production, out of sight, out of mind, out of business. I think this <laughs> quote, we grabbed it directly from Uncle G, Grant Cardone, right? I, I'm gonna repeat it, out of sight, out of mind, out of business, right? This is why we're super fans of high volume. In every single of our accounts, I think four between four and seven pieces of content go out every single day, right? And it's been it's been very interesting to see what's happening because it's very low friction because we do have a system that allows for that. But at the same at the same time, it's multiple points of contact with different people inside of our market, and people see it, right? They see our face coming out every single day. By the way, it doesn't only come out of the Bizrose account, it comes out of our, our accounts as well. So people are like, man, I've seen the stuff that you guys have been putting out for like a year now. I'm like, awesome. How do you like it? What's your favorite episode? I have no idea, but I like it, right? And it's like, okay, we are there. It's a, it's a branding element at some point, and we're multiplying, we're present in front of their eyes, right? Uh, something really cool is like, okay, try to identify what your minimum viable mm -hmm. content is, right? Well, is it Facebook Lives? Is it Instagram Stories? Like, how am I going to be consistent? Right, right now, we have a minimum viable show because now we have resources. But before that, it was minimum viable content on its own, and we got to define that to get started. Yeah. Consistency equals Art. Fonzie came out with this. <laughs> Art stands for authority, relevancy, and trust, right? If we are consistent every single day, you are going to become that person of authority. You're going to become relevant to your audience because they're going to see you every single day. They want to meet you. They want to learn from you. This is why we were able to launch season three of 45 Live publicly for the first time open to somebody else. And we had about 100 people that were ready to do like, let's do it. Completely free. No Facebook ads. And we we yeah. we launched it. And it was, it was now a huge thinking success. about it, we should should have put click funnels as an affiliate part in that in that deal right there you know turner we're coming we're coming i know <laughs> you, you you came like two months too a little too late season, uh, <laughs> season four of 45 live coming soon <laughs> yeah and uh, obviously and this is something that was shared earlier too you know you are the only one that listens 100 percent of your message right we gotta be comfortable mm -hmm. with sharing these stories uh like the potato gun story i don't think we've shared the 45 live story uh, just like Russell, but we, that's probably one of the stories that we share the most, right? Yep. And, and it resonates and it, and it clicks because people are feeling that pain. The people that we're trying to connect with are there, are in that spot. So identify yeah. those stories and you're going to find those stories through the consistency of your publishing. That's right. Uh, that That's something that was, you know, it was key for us. The fact that we stay consistent, it allows you to see oh, I'm talking about these messages so consistently. People are asking me about these same things and I, I'm repeating myself over here. 
this is what needs to have a little bit more attention. And that consistency has allowed us to build frameworks just like this one, like the publishing pyramid that we're talking about today. So consistently, 100%. Then comes capacity. And there's a quote that we absolutely love is, you can do anything once you stop trying to do everything, right? And that I feel like that describes content creation for, I would say, 80 to 90% of people. They're trying to do everything, right? And then you get accomplished nothing. And for us, it, it became a matter of, okay, where do we need to focus, right? At first, it was 45 Live. And as we started building our resources, then it became a matter of, can we put those resources into building a process that is going to allow us to multiply this? But the focus was then the process. So super important. You can do anything once you stop trying to do everything. Your capacity is relative to your resources. Again, money, time, the time of your team, right? At first, the two of us, there's no way we could have executed the M2M. That is the name of the process that we used to multi-purpose, right? There's no way we could have done it for our clients and for ourselves. No way. As soon as we started hiring, hiring a team, that changed because now we can leverage their time as well. And guess what? We can do the show now three times a week and there's always content coming out after the show. Um, then respect the cadence. Super, super important. Whatever your cadence is, you got to stick to it on the long term. We had actually an agency owner local here in, in, in Jacksonville, Florida, and he shared that he has grown his agency for the last 20 years in a row. And we're like, what's the secret, right? And he's like, respect the cadence. That's it. He's like, once I established the cadence, that's what I did day in and day out. So we got that in between <laughs> our heads. And we're like, okay, what is the capacity, right, that fits that, that cadence? and let's stick to it on a consistent basis. KISS, uh, we all know what that means. Keep it, uh, it I, I kind of change it a little bit. Keep it super simple. <laughs> Capacity's growth uh, should model the compound effect, right? And for those who are familiar with, you know, compounding effects, you start and you don't really see much of a momentum and all of a sudden it just starts escalating quicker and quicker and quicker. And that is what happens when you stick to your capacity in the long term. And like my brother said, you got to be brutally honest with yourself because our perceived capacity is often not our real capacity, right? We, we overestimate what we can do in the short term and we underestimate what we can do in the long term. So a lot of times we're like, oh yeah, I can do 20 funnels and a hundred episodes of podcast in a week, right? Let's be, let's be honest with ourselves. We probably won't be able to do all that, but what if I commit to do one podcast episode per week, right? For the next three months. So again, being brutally honest with capacity. The last stage resources to kind of wrap this up is, you know, growth is never by chance, you know, test and then invest, you know, and, and when it is testing, it's testing your, the, the other elements that we talked about, right? The messaging, your consistency, your capacity, we got to understand like, how do we work? How does our team work, right? Like, and through that, it's, we, we can start testing different systems, different tools, right? And, and this is all framework based, right? Like yep. everything started literally on Google Docs and then we've been plugging in different tools that we, we can leverage to increase the velocity right and the and the and that framework right so scaling is directly correlated to the resources successfully invested in the right processes right so i i think that's super important and we're only going to discover that through consistency through doing the reps right just like working out we're gonna we're gonna expand that muscle we're gonna we're gonna make it work we're gonna sweat and we're gonna sit down and we're gonna reflect and we're like sounds good this actually worked i feel good with this right there's a concept that that we've been sharing a lot lately is content umami what is that content that makes you feel good not only on the production value but also on the message on was i able to execute when i said i was gonna able to execute right like what happens inside of our mind when we say we're gonna publish once time one, once a week let's say a long form content show and that doesn't happen we're training our subconscious to not execute, right? So let's set those goals, right? And apply those frameworks to be able to be consistent so we can get these resources. How do we get those resources? Obviously, we're going to attach it to an, an amazing offer presented on ClickFunnels so we can cash in and then we can <laughs> reinvest in our team, in our systems and continue the, the content fly. We'll, like so many of our guests have coined this. So um, on our side of things, what's next? 
obviously we are actually starting our affiliate journey. This is like a starting point for us. So we're super stoked to, to yeah. connect with each one of you guys uh, on the publishing side of things. If you guys have any questions, we'd love to, to chit chat and, and get to know each one of you. Again, doors are open for the show. If you guys want to come and talk about what you guys do and uh, yeah, let's connect. We're on Facebook as Biz Bros Go for the page, but you can find Luis Camejo for both. Uh, we have orange pictures all over the place and uh, same, that's same, yeah. same, same brothers, same, same profile names, pictures. Uh, same profile pictures. Yeah. There, there's a competition out there that's hashtag pick a bro. Um, so, you know, uh, definitely we should pick right now. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, no pressure, but uh, it, it has been a pleasure. I hope this was useful. If you guys want the visuals and the PDF, please send us a, a, a quick DM. Uh, we'll send it also to, to Turner so he can, you know, put it on a resource page or something like that. But uh, yeah, it's it's been a pleasure and thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, and we are back. We are back. How, how, how was you that? like that? Oh, God. It was golden boulders all over the place, man. That was yeah. so cool. It was absolutely amazing. It was a great experience, actually. Yes. For those that listen, I don't know if you knew this, but Panjun was there, Ooh, right? Uh, Gabe Schillinger was there. Turner, the one and only Turner Leslie, who was right part of the Contents Profit family, who yeah. is part of the Contents Profit family. RJ as was well. There. Was there. RJ was Ooh. there. So such many a, such incredible a cool party. Every, The feedback was like, we should be doing this more often, right? Yes. And uh, so for those who are not familiar with uh, ClickFunnels, ClickFunnels was actually the company with one of their books, Dotcom Secrets, that got us into this incredible world and allowing us, giving us the tools to actually go and pursue what we love to do. Yeah. Um, and uh, it has facilitated our process, our selling process, and uh, the content hubs that we create are in there. And it's so fun. And those are some of the things that we're going to start implementing and, and integrating it with uh, with the 45 Live Challenge, with uh, the group. Uh, it's going to be so fun, so fun. Yeah, absolutely. So, guys, thank you so much for tuning oh, yeah. in today, for listening to our presentation. Yes. And... With that being said, thank you guys so much for tuning into the Content is Profit <laughs> podcast. Go ahead and follow the show in your favorite platform and on social media at Beast Bros Go. That is right. And if you find that presentation impactful, please don't forget to share it and and leave a five star review. See ya. Bye, guys. <laughs>